Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your Son for us to reconcile us. We thank you for his baptism and the empowerment for his ministry, that we may come to know you as Lord and Savior. May our eyes be open to see your hand at work about us, our ears be open to hear your word, our hearts be open to receive and embrace it. Come, Holy Spirit, take over this service and fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. We pray these things in the precious name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It is wonderful to see you in the house of the Lord today where we do worship our Lord and Savior, the risen King Jesus. And he is glad you're here today to worship him. Today is the first Sunday of Epiphany. It is the Sunday in which we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. And it is a day that we renew our baptismal vows. And in our baptismal vows at the, at the baptism we will say you are marked as Christ's own forever. You are marked as Christ's own forever. It is a time when we begin our journey, when we receive the Holy Spirit, when He empowers us. It's a time of us making that commitment or our parents making that commitment for us that we will follow the Lord, that they will bring us up in the Apostles' teaching. And then when we are confirmed We confirm that we want to continue in that teaching, that we want to continue to follow the Lord. And we continue to do that. Today, we start out in our gospel message. The gospel message today is John in the wilderness, and he's preaching. And he's not stagnant. You know, he's not just in one place. Because it says that he was preaching and proclaiming the good news, throughout the River Jordan area in Judea. It is a place where he goes up and down and he's preaching so that all can hear, so that all can understand, so that, you know, it's like being, it's not just sitting at St. Elizabeth's. He migrated up and down just to present the gospel. The news was so great for him. He is the one who says, I am coming. I have come to proclaim the one who is coming after me. I have come to proclaim him whose thongs I am not worthy to untie. He places himself even lower than a servant. He recognizes where his ministry is. He knows that he doesn't want to draw attention to himself, but rather he wants to point to the Messiah. For over 400 years, God had been silent. For over 400 years, there was the hope and the anticipation of the Messiah. There was a hope and the anticipation of God intervening again on their behalf. Throughout this time, many had fallen away. Many had fallen away from how they worshipped, including a lot of the priests both in the Sadducees and the Pharisees' side. They had just fallen away. Jeremiah reminds us when he preaches as he's the prophet and he reminds them, the priest, what God has said, that there are some of you that are bad shepherds. There are some of you that are leading the flock astray. They weren't worshiping God in the way that they were supposed to worship. They weren't worshiping him for who he is but rather they were going through the motions. They were more interested in their doing their religious, pious duty. They had fallen away from the purpose in leading the people into the presence of God and worshiping for who he is. It was a time that people had fallen away because there was nobody leading them. But yet they hung to the stories. They hung to the things that God had done in the past. They hung to the promise that God had made to Abraham that he would have descendants as multiple as the stars, multiple as the sand. The promise that they saw when God brought them through the Red Sea, when he took them out of slavery, 
and brought them into the promised land or at least headed to it. But again, remember, they rebelled. We go through the history of Israel and we find that there are periods in which they were faithful and those who led were faithful and those that led were not so faithful. I love reading through the Old Testament, especially when they say that a certain king found favor in the Lord. And then shortly thereafter, and king so-and-so did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They went through history, up and down, up and down. But they always saw how God had brought them out. They always trusted in him. They knew and they hoped for someone to lead them out of this oppression that they were in with the Romans. Here is John. He's out in the wilderness. God had been silent up until this point. And John's clarion voice going up and down the Jordan River. And he's speaking. And he's proclaiming the good news. Repent. Be baptized. Turn your lives around. Start worshiping God because there is one who is mightier than I who is coming. Did you catch in the beginning of our gospel today? Our gospel began with these words. As the people were filled with expectation. Can you imagine what they must have felt like? God had been silent and all of a sudden he's speaking again. They're filled with expectations because they know they're on the threshold of God doing something great. God doing something in their lives. And they have that expectation. And John turns to them and says, repent. If we'd looked in the previous chapter, in the verses in the beginning of this chapter, we would find that John had been telling them. Now, he told some of them they were broods of vipers. And we'd read that during our Advent season. And the people were asking, what must we do? And John had explained it. Last week, we celebrated the Feast of the Epiphany. God revealing to us and to the world who he is. We celebrated that the Magi had come. They had traveled over two years to find the King of the Jews. Over two years to find this child to worship him and to give him gifts because they knew something spectacular had happened. And we remember from last week that there were three main characters. There was King Herod who had not relinquished or not bowed down to God. He rejected God. There were the scribes and the Pharisees and the priests who he inquired of Who is this child? Who is this? And they said, it is prophecy. It has been prophesied that there would be one who comes. And yet the priests and the scribes who knew this ignored it. But it was the magi. It was the magi who were Gentiles. Magi who were astrologers. Magi who defied what the Jewish people believed and said as we read in Deuteronomy last week. They're the ones who came and worshipped. They're the ones who saw. And again, we're faced with that same type of people looking. There were those who came to the river bank that he called the brood of vipers. And again, they ignored what God was doing. They rejected what God was doing. But there were those who came and were baptized. Usually what happened was that it wasn't the Jewish people who were baptized, it was the Gentiles who were coming into Judaism. They're the ones who were baptized. It wasn't the practice, but yet these Jewish people are coming and they're being baptized. They're repenting because they'd fallen away from God. Today is a day in which we see God's hand moving mightily throughout all of this. John never points to himself. He always points to others. They were wondering who who John was. And John explains 
who he is. I listen to a lot of people as they talk about their favorite ministers or they talk about somebody that they really follow. There's an author that I like. His name is Francis Chan. And he writes some really good books. And Francis had this church outside of San Francisco. And the church is one of these kind of mega churches. And it got to be over 3,000 in membership. And it was percolating and it was going wonderfully and they started a, a seminary and everything was going well. And one day he decides he needs to walk away from it. He needs to walk away because the focus wasn't on Jesus. He said, I walked into my church and I was listening to people and he was hearing them say, well, Francis does this and Francis does that and isn't Francis great and isn't... And the church had been focused on him rather than who he was teaching about. The focus had been turned to him rather than glorifying Jesus. People were looking to him. John the Baptist never does this. There are people, and, you know, and I'm not picking on them, but there are people who are Joel Osteen fans. And, oh, Joel writes this, and Joel writes that, and Joel, do, Joel does this, and Joel does that, and, oh, it's wonderful to be in Joel's church. It's not Joel's church. It's Jesus' church. It's God's church. And that's what we have to see. John is not pointing to himself, but he's pointing to Jesus. And he's pointing to who he is. Jesus comes and he is baptized. And did you notice that it says, and when he was praying, he had been baptized. And when he was praying, the heavens opened. The heavens opened. And the dove fell upon him. It's not that Jesus didn't know who he was. In Luke chapter 2, we read about him being in the temple teaching. He and his parents had been with a group, because they always traveled in groups for safety, had been to Jerusalem for the Passover, and he had remained behind. And they asked him, why did you stay? And he says, I'm in my father's house. Jesus felt that call throughout his life. And today is not that he just recognized it. Today is a day that he's affirmed. And the heavens opened and God spoke and said, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus didn't need a baptism of repentance for himself because he was sinless. He needed to do it for Israel. He represents Israel and their unfaithfulness and he is bringing them back. Jesus leads the people. He's empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we are empowered by the Holy Spirit when we are baptized, when we are sealed and marked as Christ's own. And we pray and seek God and we follow Him. We're no different than those back then. They turned their way. They'd gone away from the Lord. They didn't worship him in the way that they should. They were more concerned about themselves rather than trusting God for the things that he would give. Our Isaiah reading tells us that when we truly follow, when we truly believe, that these are the promises that God gives us. Now thus says the Lord, He who created you, Jacob, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear. This is what God is speaking to you and me today. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. I have called you by name, each and every one. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers... They shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, 
you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you for I am the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel your Savior your Savior the Israelites who came out to be baptized looked forward to what Christ would do our baptism looks backward to what Christ did for us and redeemed us. Today we will renew our baptismal vows along with having two baptisms this morning. The baptisms are marking these children as Christ's own forever. It is empowering them. And as we remember our baptismal vows, let us remember that Christ empowers us through His Holy Spirit. Christ empowers us to proclaim the good news. Christ empowers us to share the hope. Christ empowers us to give others hope that God will never leave them. There are people who feel that God has abandoned them and yet He's walking with them. Though you walk through fire, you will never be burned. He's there to help and sustain you. He's there to help and empower you to do ministry like John's. Now, maybe not wear camel hair and, you know, those kind of things like he did. But to share the good news. To point to Jesus. Not to point to some minister. Not just to point to St. Elizabeth. But to point to who reigns over St. Elizabeth. He empowers us to be his children. To be able to call him... Abba, Father. Today, when we baptize these two young men, will you remember those baptismal vows as you said them and as you repeat them? And remember what God has done for you through Christ, through His Son, that we are redeemed and reconciled to Him. Amen. Amen. We're going to take just one moment to go and get the candidates for baptism and we're bringing all the other children in with so that they too may witness this it is a time that we want to remember and it's a time that while they may not remember when they were baptized as a baby that they would you know see it again and hopefully hopefully it would spark